Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> Part two of the two-seater go-kart re rebuild. As I said in the last one, we got some engine work to do. So, yes. we're going to flip this around and show you where we're at. Peace. <laughs> okay, as we said in the last one, this is what's left of the clutch. And it's bad, so we're going to have to swap this crank out, I think. So we're in the process of tearing this motor down. Here's where we're at. We got a couple of last couple of these couple of head bolts. Take it out. We're gonna see what the top side looks like. All right. Here we go. Trying to be somewhat careful. Maybe we'll get lucky and be able to reuse the head gasket. Hopefully. There we go. Good. Been a lot of carbon in here. See all that? A lot of carbon in this thing. Um, you can't really see down loop. there. Yeah, we got a lot of carbon build up up here, so we got some cleaning to do. The cylinder itself. Grab a rag. The cylinder itself doesn't actually look too bad. Piston's fairly clean. Back up just a little bit. There you go. But. Yeah, it's, there's not a whole lot of scoring or nothing. There's no ridge. So, it's actually not too bad. But, let's keep going with the teardown. We'll check back in a little bit. Okay, first thing we're going to do. And, yeah, I'm just going to pry it out. But, we don't ever want to see this thing again. Bye-bye, Governor. No more governor, Joe. Okay, that takes care of that. Next thing we're gonna do here, as far as just some real simple performance upgrades, nothing huge, but old school flathead technology, we're gonna shave the eyebrows off. So we're gonna take our Dremel, we're gonna start shaving away the material here between the valves. And what that's gonna do is help the airflow into the cylinder smoother rather than having to ramp over the top of this. So, old school flathead technology used to refer to that as shaving the eyebrows off. So that's the first thing we're going to do. So, we're going to grab the Dremel. I'm going to scoot back a little bit. And we're going to get at it. Okay. We are done here with what I said before as far as shaving the eyebrows out. You can see the difference in here. Not the smoothest, but it'll work. Good enough for who it's for. Joe, get a nice close up there. We kind of nicked the valve a little bit, you know, but it'll be fine. <laughs> nicked the surface here a little bit, but there again, it'll be fine. It's a stock motor, other than this, a little bit. So we're going to reuse the original head gas or the old head gasket. It's not too bad. Now, Here's the stock head. We didn't clean it because we we're using the milled head this time. How much it's been, well, here, let me show you the difference. How much it's been shaved down, I'm not entirely sure. But, because I've had this head for a long time. This shaved head here, I haven't used for a long time. That's why I can't remember how much it's been shaved. But, we are going to use it. Yeah, exactly. Use the shaved head. Which the milled head it will of course this the shaved down head makes the chain combustion chamber smaller, which will raise compression and ultimately raise horsepower. Or so we hope. <laughs> so, while I'm digging for bolts, <laughs> torquing the head back down, <coughs> we'll come back with the next thing in a little bit. Okay, next thing we got, well, we got the, of course, we got the cylinder head put on and torqued down, so this is all ready to go. Okay, here's the next thing as far as cheap performance. Here is the original cast iron flywheel. Nice and heavy. We're going to get 
rid of that for another old trick to save money rather than you know buying the expensive aftermarket parts we used to use the aluminum flywheels off of a three and a half horse Briggs they're smaller in diameter you can see which does pose a small problem but the nice thing is they're much much lighter so we got our key down here we're going to go ahead and stick that on stick that on okay now we're gonna put the recoil back on and we'll tighten that up in a minute but what we use here is now there again what's still available what's not I don't know but um, you got to relocate because this flywheel is shorter diameter you got to relocate the coil used to be able to buy these already made I always made my own just because it was cheaper not necessarily easier but so and I need to get some better screws for this obviously but they do got to be somewhat countersunk so what that does is with these two holes down here that relocates our coil down low enough that it can get to the flywheel because if you put it up here in the stock location roughly where it would be you're way you're up way too high see i can almost fit my yeah. thumb through, yeah, so I can fit my finger through that gap we got to build this bracket so we built this bracket this is an old one that i had laying around from a different project from an old project so we'll use this here to relocate the bracket but smaller lighter flywheel is going to help with uh throttle response so we'll tighten everything down we'll be back well we were getting ready to fire this thing up and we ran into a little bit of a snag uh, come here and show them go it's on the flywheel right locked up yeah she's locked up tight so what we gotta do Take this thing back apart. Too bad. Well, the fact that it's stuck is not normally a good sign. Tell me when you want to stop. There we go. Okay. Too terrible. Not too terribly terrible. Here's the lifters. We'll grab. Oh, yep, that's the cam gear. Cam gear looks okay. Okay, we kind of skipped here, but except for the valves, the block is bare. Let me show you folks what happened. See some nice, lovely scoring in there. Oh, Which happens? All around there. Yep. It happens. That was probably my fault. I probably didn't get this as clean as I should have. Yeah, oh well. But, it'll be fine. Because, this kid right here, Hello. his luck, Never runs out. Nope. <laughs> we all wish we could have the luck this kid has. Here is, ladies and gentlemen, the piston that came out. Some nice, lovely scoring marks on there. But, because I hoard 
parts, especially for these old flatheads that, um, you know, I, at this point, like I said in other videos, I honestly don't know what you can get for these. But, dear old dad happens to have a 30 overbore piston. All we gotta do is clean up the rings and we are ready to go. Stock rod, but we do happen to have a 30 overbore piston. Which means we can punch this thing out and should be good as new. Yes. Your luck never runs out, Joe. Nope. So. It let's seems like it does, but it never does. Let's teach you how to work a cylinder. We'll be back. Well, we're on the reassembly process. We figured we'd just do a quick little update here. Saving, you know, some of the boring details, but. Yeah. We got our board out, 30 over. Pistons in. Working on putting the rod in, in right now. Or the rod cap on, I should say. Um, none of this stuff is brand new, so we're just using some 8090 gear lube for uh, assembly oil. Because none of this stuff is brand spanking new. We're just using used parts, so. For, uh, you know, we'll have everything lubricated before we start it, this will work fine, so. But, it's going back together. So hopefully here, we can make some noise before long. The kids are hard at work. Yeah. Getting close to firing this thing up. Yeah. Cinderella is working on putting the bolts in and tightening up the side cover. Here, here. And we will be just yeah. about ready. They're getting excited. The neighbor's getting excited too. A little gun happy. <laughs> all right, moment of truth time. It's all back together, ready to rock and roll. Will it run? What do you think, Joe? Yes. It's gonna run. Joe's already noticed by pulling it, we got a lot more compression than what we used to. Remember, we shaved the eyebrows off. We got the shaved down head and it is now board 30 over cam everything else is all stock obviously stock carburetor so put that on remember kids do not try this at home watch the, watch the camera okay give it a little drink now let's see it just like that. there we go That's surprising. Bad thing about high compression.
folks, you remember what it sounded like when it was bone stock? Now, you can tell already we woke this thing up a lot. And honestly, for me, we didn't spend any money, did we, buddy? We used all the gaskets. <laughs> um, it's still the stock cam, the stock rod. It's a stock style piston, but it's 30 over. So, bore it 30 over, get rid of the muffler, let it breathe a little. Like I said, you shave the eyebrows out like we showed you. The plain down head. What you can, you know, bone stock, obviously, is a five horse. It's hard to honestly say, but I would estimate somewhere between 10 and 15 horsepower where we're at right now. So, not bad. It sounds good. It's got a nice thump to it. So... It's a lot more than what we're going to need with a one-wheel wonder, but we will come back to this project in the future and change that. But for now, we're going to call this one quits. We will come back next time in part three, and we're going to take care of putting the clutch back on it. We're going to take care of moving the pedals back forward where they need to be. So, Joe can ride it. And then, folks, Joe's going to take you on our first test ride. So, till next time, I am the High Plains Drifter. This is Nightblood Entertainment. Peace and chicken grease.